What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex, you and you're watching The Road to Beast Wars. This is just a web series where we talk about the production of Transformers Rise of the Beasts. This is episode number seven, and I hope everybody had a great weekend. It has been an action-packed weekend, especially if you live in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, because of course, Principal... Principal... Pr <laughs> what the hell? Principal... <laughs> Principal photography for Transformers Rise of the Beast uh, is happening in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Okay, <laughs> drink water. And I've been reading all the comments, the tweets, and all the feedback from all the fans, and there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of excitement and lots of positive energy and enthusiasm, and it's just great to get this feeling back again. And I'm talking about fans excited to see another big Transformers live action film. And what we've seen so far is Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Mirage, I almost said Jazz. <laughs> but most importantly, Optimus Prime in his original mode. Now, of course, there are a couple of changes here and there, but just like I said before in my previous video, I can talk about all the things that, and, and nitpick all the things that I don't really like about it, but when I watch it on screen, none of that is gonna matter. None of that's gonna matter. None of that is gonna matter because it's gonna look so great, okay? When it's on the big screen, it's Optimus Prime, okay? It doesn't even matter at that point. So I'm super, super excited. And regarding Optimus Prime, you know, this is really the first time that we're seeing Optimus Prime in his truest, truest G1 mode behind the scenes. Because we've seen how he looks like in that cameo appearance at the end of Bumblebee, but that was kept secret. I don't know of anybody who snapped any photos when they were in San Francisco uh, when they were filming that scene on the bridge. Like, that was a big, big surprise. So we never even got a teaser for that. That was just a big surprise at the end of Bumblebee. And as for em Evasion Mode Optimus Prime at the end of, or at the uh, beginning of Transformers Age of Extinction, I mean, we knew that was gonna be there, but it wasn't really the same. It was just a rusty version of Optimus Prime. Uh, you could still see flames on him, but he didn't have the G1 colors. He might've had the G1 shape, but not the colors. So seeing this for the very first time, and he has that, uh, that silver stripe that goes across, but this time it goes diagonal, you know, it still looks really good. And you can see the back part of it is blue too. So that's why it's super exciting. So um, man, that's a, uh, I mean, I don't really know what to say, except that I'm so happy to see that it looks like Optimus Prime is gonna appear in his G1 form with a lot of screen time. Not just a cameo appearance like he did in Bumblebee, but with a lot of screen time. So I'm super excited about that, okay? Um, I want to talk a bit about this poll that I put out and, um, this was on Twitter. I posted it on July 14th and it was a three day poll and it got a 352 votes in, <clears throat> excuse me. And, uh, the question was, what kind of Transformers film do you want to see? Now, Twitter only allows four poll, um, um, options. Uh, but I, I actually wanted to put like six or seven more because what I have here is Transformers Rise of the Beast, The Last Night Sequel, Faithful Beast Wars film, a fully rebooted TF film, um, uh, what else did I want to put, uh, uh, an actual Bumblebee sequel, uh, a, uh, a a Transformers film, like a Transformers, uh, uh, like, a, like with all the full Autobot cast, that's not a Beast Wars film. Uh, that is um, that is uh, um, like a, um, a like a follow up to Bumblebee, and also finally the the Cybertron prequel. So that would be the other three options. But I only put out four uh, options because that's what Twitter allows, and it was actually a battle between TF Rise of the Beast and the Last Night sequel. It was a very very head to head battle, but at the end of it all, it looks like the fans who have voted wanted a fully rebooted TF film, um, um, like most. That's that's what they want the most. The majority of the um, of the fans want this, with 36.9% of the votes going towards this film. 
And you know who these people are? I'll be, I'll be, um, I think I'll, I'll um, uh, when it comes down to it, it really is the G1 fans, all right? Myself included. I didn't vote in my own poll, but I'm just saying, like, who would want a fully rebooted TF film? I mean, we got something going on, right? And I'm thinking that it's fans that, you know, we're done watching the Michael Bay fan films, and, and we saw Bumblebee, but Bumblebee has its, uh, the Michael Bay influences. The, the fans that want to see a fully rebooted TF films are the ones that want to see a complete, complete, uh, like a, a makeover. Not a makeover, but like a, like a haul over, if that's even a word. I, th I think I heard it before. But a complete, no, overhaul, haul over. <laughs> a complete overhaul of the franchise where it's full on G1. All right, even though Bumblebee is the closest thing that we have to G1 right now, uh, a full-on G1 overhaul, I think that is what the fans who voted for a fully rebooted TF film really want. And you know what? I totally don't blame you because it's a, it would be a brand new direction. It would be something that's faithful to the source material and it would be a, a, um, a fresh new start. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm totally down for that. Uh, but of course, uh, what I really wanted to know uh, with regards to this poll is I'm posting this poll now in July 14th right when like it's been a few uh, two weeks after the beginning of principal photography in, in Montreal based on what we've seen I just wanted to know how do people feel about it now how do people feel about a, a TF a Transformers Rise of the Beast and it looks like people are still very very enthusiastic about it because two days into this poll two day, two out of the three days um, Rise of the Beast was actually in the lead and I think it has to do with the fact that people's attitudes have changed because a lot of people were thinking that this is a, a Beast Wars movie so I just don't care about it all right as you can see right here a faithful Beast Wars film doesn't even have that much uh, that much um, enthusiasm uh, a faithful a faithful Beast Wars film being that uh, a Beast Wars film without any humans Full, like, full on 65 million years ago or whenever it took place, like, not many people are excited about that. But after seeing the behind the scenes that we've seen so far in Montreal, it looks like that people are actually more excited about Transformers Rise of the Beast on the same level of people who actually want, or fans rather, who want to see the Transformers Last Night sequel. So that really tells you something about the, the demographic and the division of the fans, okay? It's not just one type of fan or two types of fans, there's a lot of different types of fans who want to see different things. So that's just really interesting to know about, all right? And I really wanted to point that out, and that was the whole purpose of that poll, all right? It doesn't mean that, you know, anything's going to change, but uh, but it, it's good to see the the, 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 the diversity of the, the fan, the fandom, okay? All right, uh, before we get into the news, I actually want to give a couple of shout-outs, and uh, this is to OG Rage Nation members who've been with me whether it's from the very beginning with Dark of the Moon back in 2010 or Age of Extinction, doesn't matter. These are fans that have been with me for years and I actually remember a lot of these 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 fans, these Rage Nation members because, you know, as I watched, I, I mean, as I uh, put out my videos, um, you know, the hundreds or so plus videos, 200 plus videos that I have out there for the Road to series, um, I read your comments, and as I read your comments, I get familiar with your names, and of course, there are uh, the, the loyal Rage Nation members who bought my merchandise. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I want to give a big shout out and welcome back to the Road Series to Brian Bumstead, Angel D. Curbello, Pawn H, Storm is Gaming, Zodiac, Thornstein, Nielsen, Tez Kiryu, uh, Chris Cruz, and Shane Platts. I'm so happy to have you guys back on board for this journey. Of course, there's a lot more of you, but I'll do more shout outs next time. But I really appreciate you guys coming back and um, thank you for joining the ride, okay? Uh, next up, I would like to give uh, a big shout out to uh, Jason Wade. 
because in my previous episode, I actually talked a lot about um, uh, these these uh, truck parts that I wasn't familiar with. Obviously, I'm not a I don't know very much about trucks except um, they're big, <laughs> and this is a Western Star, and this is a uh, 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 another um, a brand would be Volvo. Okay, there's of course the Freightliner, uh, but to anyways, um, I I'm just want to point out this comment and make a big thank you shout out to him. This is regarding the um, the 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 bar the bar frame the metal frame uh, that is in front of the uh, of the Optimus Prime truck and that is um, this is what he had to say. It's one of those K100 Kensworth trucks. Plus, you can tell it's been modified for the movie. The part you're referring to is the fifth wheel along with a 45 quick hitch. His back has been modified with massive rear suspension to haul extremely heavy cargo. That's why his wheels are exposed. His truck is the kind that will haul wide, lar wide load cargo. That's what the grill guard there is for. Truck that size have hard time stopping. My father was a truck driver for over 40 years. So it is a grill guard. So thank you so much for uh, bringing that to my attention. And I'm so happy to have have um, a fans and followers with all different kinds of backgrounds so they can help answer these questions and they know um, they, they, they know about, um, they're knowledgeable in these areas. So thank you so much, Jason Wade. Also a big shout out to Steven Bruni, who also had some feedback about that. What you are looking at on Prime is a sun visor and the metal frame is a cow catcher or some call it a bull bar. I still say the other one just might be Motormaster. Okay, so once again, thank you so much for your feedback on that. I really appreciate that, okay? And I want to give a big shout out to Paul Graham. And this is for having an eagle eye and pointing out something that is in the background. Not actually a background, kind of like the foreground, but it's not actually the main point of focus. But it's good to notice these things around the main point of focus. And that is the blue car at 506 is the same model as G1 Prowl, Blue Streak, and Smokescreen, a Nissan 240Z. And I, I believe that it's a Datsun. Okay, and that is really cool. Check it out. This is uh, at 506 in my video and you can see right there that's the Nissan 240Z and a lot of people or rather um, uh, aside from uh, aside from from uh, uh, Paul uh, I have a friend that actually mentioned that oh my god is that a Datsun is that is that Prowl or, or, or like Blue Streak and I actually responded to him and said that I don't think that it's anything I don't think that it's a uh, it's actually going to be an Autobot. I, I actually think that it's just going to be an extras car because a lot of these vehicles, like whether it be Optimus Prime or Bumblebee or Mirage, they've been covered or hidden in a truck, like a truck carrying or like a, like a, like a, a holding area. You know what I'm saying? So this dad sends in the open and I, I, uh, I don't, uh, I don't think that, uh, it's, it's anything. So, I mean, it's cool to see that it's there, uh, but um, like at, like as a kind of an Easter egg, but I don't believe that it's part of the production. I don't believe that it's a, an Autobot. Okay, so uh, there you have it. All right, so let's talk about Optimus Prime. And we already know that Optimus Prime and Bumblebee are back as we talked about in the previous episode, but I wanna bring forth to your attention these new photos that were posted on transformersfr.com. That's the French Transformers site. And a uh, big shout out to, um, in no particular order, Antoine Webster, Jesse Roberts, Capcom Kai, Castle Blonde, Z Magnus News Official, Aaron09345, and the fake Travius Prime. Thank you so much for posting these photos and uh, sharing them with me and bringing them to my attention. I really appreciate you guys. Without you guys always bringing this stuff to my attention, we wouldn't have this this uh, this web series because uh, you guys bring the information to me and I basically provide my opinion and feedback about it. And that's what this series is. It's really just me um, just talking about what I see and just bringing some, um, sharing with you my, my, uh, my, my, my thoughts and feelings about it. All right, so thank you so much for that. So let's check out this close up of Optimus Prime. This is, I think is our best shot of Optimus Prime. And wow, this is like, like this is such a great shot because you see that uh, 
the blue, the silver or gray, if you will. And the, the red, of course, like these are the colors of Optimus Prime. I, I remember when we watched, um, you know, the Michael Bay versions, like you see the, the blue, the red, the flames, and you knew that was Optimus Prime. And that's really, really exciting. Like you just know like, okay, that's Optimus Prime, all right? And you know, it's very, very exciting to see. But this is the original mode and it's captured really, really clear and it you know it's it's just right there and it's just a different feeling it's you know it's an excited feeling when i see the the western star optimus prime but seeing this on the other hand you know as a g1 fan that is huge i mean this is like like at this point now that i've seen i'm seeing a really clear picture of it like i don't have any issues with the way he looks i don't mind that the the stripe goes Instead of straight, it goes diagonal. I don't mind that at all. I don't. I don't know why they decided to change that, uh, but it still looks great as a whole. As for that, uh, the cow catcher or the um, the the bull bar, um, still, you know, it might take a little bit to get a uh, time to get used to. But like I said before, it's gonna look great on 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 film. Like when we see this this thing, like the final product, it's gonna look fantastic. All right, so I'm really, really pumped about that. Here's another angle uh, with a fan uh, posed in front of it, and now I really am really liking it. It almost feels like this is um, a fan's vehicle because, you know, they're the fans who do their, their uh, vehicle reproductions of Autobots and Decepticons, um, uh, mo mostly Autobots, but, you know, the fans, like, they really get it right down to the, the main details. Like, you know, the, the colors look great, and but they're really doing it for real. Like, this is G1 Optimus Prime in a full-on film where Optimus Prime, and I'm, I, I truly believe that Optimus Prime is the main Autobot character, not Bumblebee, as we've already seen. He had his own film already, okay? And he's been in other five, five other films before that. So this is Optimus Prime's film, and he looks so good. All right. Next up, we have uh, another fan posing with Optimus Prime. But not only that, this is a scene where Optimus Prime is going to share a scene with Jazz. And that's... See, there I go again. Okay. <laughs> this is... A, let me try that again. This is Optimus Prime, and he's going to share a scene with... Oh my god, I almost said it! <laughs> this is Optimus Prime, and he's almost gonna... And he's he's sharing a scene with Mirage, okay? And it's gonna be really, really cool because a lot of times um, you think that... I mean, not a lot of times, but based on the previous photo, I mean, previous episode, um, I talked about how Optimus Prime and Bumblebee are gonna share a scene together. That's really, really exciting. But I'd love to see Optimus Prime share a scene with other Autobots, and here he is with Jazz, and it looks so good! You know, I really cannot wait for them to just roll out all together as a team, like an Autobot team. I don't know who the, the full-on Autobot cast is going to be. I hope it's not just the three of them. I hope maybe one or two more. Okay, I'm down with one or... Okay, there's RC, right? Um, so, okay, RC is a bit smaller. So, one more Autobot. Uh, I would love to see um, Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Jazz... Uh, RC and then um, one more. I don't know who that vehicle is going to be, but just make it five Autobots and then we are good. All right. So uh, I'm really curious who that who's that going to be. Uh, hopefully Prowl. You know, wouldn't that be great to see Prowl back as a police car um, and being that uh, being a well, I guess it wouldn't be able to be a, 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 a Datsun or the 240Z because um, uh, that would. Uh, that that wouldn't work out <laughs> i mean you know they don't have police cars looking like that okay but i would still love to see prowl i guess make him a police car a 90s police car whatever they look like but yeah that's my personal request i would love to see prowl okay um and there you have it that's all we have to talk about with regards to principal photography we're gonna get a lot more of course this is just the beginning and so far we've only seen um uh, some scenes of them, um, I guess they're rolling out during the daytime and there's a nighttime scene in a, like a, what looks to be like a museum, like a charity event. So that's all we know so far. These, so these are really two scenes. Uh, but right now, another part of the journey is of course the toy leaks. And, uh, this was brought to my attention and I really didn't think anything of it, 
but we're going to talk about it just in case, okay? <clears throat> I don't know where this came from, but this was brought to my attention from one of the people, that, one of the fans that, that I already shouted out, and he asked me, is this fake or real? Um, and I said it's fake. Because in my mind, I was thinking, we're at principal photography right now, like, uh, like how could like how could this get leaked so early? So I think it's fake. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it's fake. And, but uh, but then upon more thought, okay, I realized that this could actually be real. All right. But let's just take a look at this and let's form an opinion right after. Okay. So we got Scourge. Okay. So this is a TF7 Blast and Go series. Okay. So I'm thinking this is one of those those action type gimmicky type of toys which are uh, geared towards a uh, more kids okay the younger younger fans okay so blast and go so i think that it's got like some wind up feature or or like a thing where you press it and then does something okay uh but we got scourge bumblebee optimus prime cheetor rc primal so i guess that's uh, optimus primal gal galavar galavar galavard sounds like that would be a name of a terracon uh ironhide ironhide okay Primal, Galavar, Scourge, and Air Razor. Okay, Air Razor, uh, you can see that. Air Razor, Pterosaur, Rhinox, Prime, Nightbird, and Primal again. Okay, so this is, as you can see, there's a Rise and Roar series. Um, that's geared, I mean, that's more of the Beast characters. Okay, so Air Razor, uh, Gala, Gala, uh, Galavar, I keep on, you know, it's a bit hard to read. Galavar, Scourge, Air Razor, uh, Pterosaur, Rhinox, and there you have it. So these characters are Terracons, Predacons, and Maximals. They are part of the Rise and Roar series, okay? Because they are beasts that roar. So um, there you have it. So what I gather from here, if this is real, uh, there is a character named Galavar, okay? That sounds like um, the 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 uh, like either a Predacon or a Terracon, okay? Uh, we also have a character called Pterosaur, which I'm going to go ahead and say, and this is a safe bet, he's a Terracon. And I think that Pterosaur is a character, I'm just going to throw this out here, is a character that doesn't even speak. That's why he's called Pterosaur. They give him a name like that, okay? <laughs> it's not, it, it sounds like a name that, um, that uh, you just refer to it as it. It's not a, a him or a her. It's an it, so that that's pterosaur. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't sound like a character that would have any have a speaking role, just a roaring. Okay. Um, then we have the studio series, and that's Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Nightbird, and Optimus Primal. Okay. So um, now, uh, now that I put a little bit more thought into it, I think that it actually is real. Now the reason why it sounds legitimate to me is because the fact that um, I was I remembered the commentary from Transformers, the 2007 movie, the very first Michael Bay movie. And back then, he said in the commentary that at some point he needed to, to um, get the, uh, identify what kind of, of, of um, uh, uh, characters and alt modes that, that, that they need to have in the movie. And they needed to identify that soon because, and this was way, way in pre-production. And that is because Hasbro, or the, 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 the factories in China, or wherever Transformers toys are produced or manufactured, they need to start working on these toys, okay? So these toys are actually worked on, um, developed, uh, or manufactured well before pre-production, okay? So the list is already out there. The list of the, the characters is out there. They're not known now. They're known well in advance. So I was thinking that it was going to be fake because this is way too early to know this, okay? This is way too early to even have this list. But upon uh, looking back at the process back in 2007 in the commentary, I realized that, you know, they totally have all the names, okay? They, they know, of course they know what they are, right? But we don't know what they are. So this is the leaked list and they're... And um, I'm, you know, looking back, I mean, talking about what I said before, which is the fifth character, it could be Ironhide, but an early version of Ironhide, like a Rise of the Beast version of Ironhide, not the GMC Top Kick version, but it, the fifth Autobot could be Ironhide, okay? So there you have it. However, however, it is possible, and this has happened many times in the past, that the um, the production, or rather the toy line, brings back characters that are not even in the movie. 
Okay, so this is of course a money grab. It's a cash grab. They just want to create more toys just so that, you know, for a uh, 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 you know more options for the collector or the parent who's buying this for the kids okay so it creates more options and therefore more merchandising is sold okay so it could be Ironhide or might not be Ironhide okay and what I'm about to show you finally in the, the last part of this episode is a visual toy leak of what could potentially be a, um, a, uh, a, a, a an Optimus Prime toy that's going to be, be released for the Transformers Rise of the Beast line, okay? And that is this. Check out this Optimus Prime. So obviously he has the same colors as the Optimus Prime that's being filmed right now. The thing is that this toy, this this um, um like a like a kitty version of this Optimus Prime toy has been shown or has been has been released in the past in the the Energon line. And this is the Energon Optimus Prime um, Evasion Mode. Um, and check this out, it's the exact same mold, okay? It's the exact same mode, but with a different head. This is Optimus Prime, um, uh, the, the leaked one, uh, with the lips, okay? This is with the, without the mouth guard, I'm sure it's gonna, you know, come, the mouth guard is gonna um, be there, but, uh, but they're showing it without the mouth guard. Uh, he just looks it just looks wrong. It just looks very evil. Like look at this This is a very blurry photo, but it looks like a very evil Optimus Prime with that type of face uh, It just looks very mean and menacing. Okay, but as you can see this is just a re repaint and a head retooling of, of the, the Energon Evasion Mode Optimus Prime and this has been done many times before they recycle previous molds this one I don't care so much about uh, Just because I'm obviously not going to collect this line. It's more the studio series, but as you can see, this is um, them using that G1 paint job that they're using in the Transformers Rise of the Beast, uh, 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 um, the, the truck mode that's being used in the film, and they're just repainting an existing product, okay? But at least we know that, okay, the toys are, I mean, the toy leaks are coming. We're going to start being able to identify some robots that are characters that are going to be in the movie. And also, we're going to know soon what these toys are going to be. Because keep in mind, February next year is Toy Fair. So, and typically, it's like a tradition. Before Toy Fair comes out, we already know what these toy. We already know at least some of them. Not all of them, but some of them before they're even released on Toy Fair officially. And then further on, we get to see uh, 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 even more photos. Official photos after Toy Fair. Alright, so there you have it. Anyways, that's all I got to say in this episode. I'm so excited to know what is going to be happening next because this is just the beginning. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We only saw Mirage Opt... See, I got it right this time. Mirage Optimus... Have I been saying Jazz? I can't remember if I've been saying Jazz. Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, and Mirage. And there's going to be more. Believe me, there's going to be more. Um, this is We haven't even got to the climactic finale battle, which is happening in Peru. So uh, this is just the, the first and second act of the film. And there is so much more to be filmed in various parts of Montreal. So um, you guys living in Montreal, you guys are so lucky. Uh, but keep those updates coming. Keep the, the news coming to me or the photos because, uh, you know, um, I'd love to see them. And uh, we got a lot to talk about. Once again, thank you everybody so much. I am so excited. Like this feeling is so nostalgic. This road series, as I've been reading from the comments, is something that a lot of fans have been waiting for. And it's because it's been a four year hiatus of no big news for a big Transformers movie since Transformers last night. Bumblebee, like I said before, is a more contained movie, so it's not the same feeling. But this is that feeling that I, I got when I was talking about Dark of the Moon, Age of Extinction, Transformers last night, and now we are back. So I'm so thankful that you guys are back on board with this journey, with me, with the Autobots. Uh, it's going to be really, really exciting. Stay tuned for more updates. My name is Alex. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.